Today we consider gold, the metal the world loves to wear but is less keen on investing in. And we ask, what is the outlook for gold in 2022? Look at what he does, not at what he says, is one of those useful maxims for life. Actions speak louder than words and all that. And gold is one of those investments where my words and deeds are at odds with each other. I'm heavily invested, both in the physical metal and the miners. My utterances, however, tend to be rather more circumspect, especially so over the past year or so, as people who follow me will know. Too many years of unfulfilled potential, I guess. The problem that gold has, as I'm forever saying, is that it is the ultimate analogue asset in a world where all the value is digital. And with this incredible boom in tech that we've seen over the last decade, this has been especially apparent. But I have also been forever saying that its time will come, and perhaps that time is 2022. In my predictions piece at the beginning of the year, I said that gold would go above $2,000 an ounce. And this week's action brought that magic number ever closer. Gold, along with all the other precious metals, the PMs, is having a good time. Silver has been leading the way, advancing forward a couple of days ahead of the other PMs. That is a good sign. It is the most speculative of the precious metals, and when it leads, it augurs well. It means capital is entering the arena. For gold, the $1,800 area has been a magnet since last summer. Any advance that gold has made has quickly run out of steam and gold has returned to the $1,800 zone. But by the same token, gold sell-offs have been muted and slides below $1,800 have also soon run out of steam with gold soon bouncing back. And the result has been what technicians might call coiling action. The tighter the noose gets around $1,800, the more pronounced the eventual spring will be, whether it's up or down, and let's hope it's up. Looking at the bigger picture, here we see a chart of gold going back to 2007, and bear in mind, when you look at long-term charts, any patterns you see, whether bullish or bearish, take a long time to pan out. On the one hand, I can see price action, over the past couple of years that is worryingly similar to the pattern gold made after its 2011 high, which led to many years of horrible bear market, and I've circled these in red. On the other hand, I see a cup and handle pattern traced out over many years, and I've defined this in green. The cup and handle formation is exactly what it says on the tin, a pattern in the price action that resembles a cup with the handle of the cup to the right. It's a famously bullish pattern, uh, especially when traced out over many years, as is the case with gold here. There are many that see such patterns as gospel and many more that see them as mumbo jumbo, but they can be useful. So let us turn to the fundamentals, the most obvious being inflation. It is everywhere across the world. The UK is now at 5.4%, the highest level in 30 years, while in the US it's at 7%. It's at 5.2% in the EU, and it is really hotting up in Latin America too. Gold is the go-to asset during inflation. See the 1970s for more details. Except that this latest bout of inflation has been known about for many months, if not years, and gold has not been trading as it is traditionally supposed to do. Maybe the narrative is changing. But I've got to say, I really like the look of that gold chart. I was speaking to my old pal James Turk yesterday, the founder of Gold Money, about his new book, Money and Liberty and the Pursuit of Happiness and the Theory of Natural Money, which, by the way, is excellent. James's uh, The Coming Collapse of the US Dollar was one of the first books I ever read on investing back in 2006, and I still regard it as one of the best. And James is one of the most knowledgeable people in the gold space. 
and he had this to say about gold in 2022. Inflation is tightening its grip on the global economy as a consequence of central banks conjuring up currency to fund government deficits. So I expect higher gold prices in the year ahead as people inevitably turn to gold to safeguard the purchasing power they have earned and saved, just like I remember from the 1970s. So how are governments going to react to all of this inflation? Are they going to put up rates, tighten monetary policies, shrink the state and cut spending? They might put up rates a little, if only for the bragging points, but rates at 5, 6 or 7%, no chance. And there is no chance they are going to shrink and tighten the rest of their activities either. So we are going to remain in this environment of negative real rates for many years. Far more likely they will fix inflation by tightening their controls and we're already hearing President Biden, Vice President Harris blame greedy merchants, suppliers and companies for inflation instead of looking in the mirror at the Federal Reserve. In the 1970s, we saw price controls, rent controls, even profit controls in the form of windfall taxes. Here in the UK, the government is already looking at ways to intervene in energy markets by paying energy suppliers in order to protect consumers from price rises. You think suppliers won't put up prices even more <laughs> if government is paying them? So there are many echoes of the 1970s already and I see the reaction to inflation being more intervention and price control rather than spending less and higher rates. Stocks did not do very well in that environment. Gold did. I also spoke to Ross Norman, who's the most successful forecaster in the LBMAs, the London Bullion Market's annual forcing, forecasting competition. And he, like me, observes that gold should have been making its move sooner and quicker, given all the inflation. Ross forecasts, sounds like the police are coming to get me. Ross forecasts, and I've rounded his numbers, an average price this year of $17.60 for gold, $21 for silver, with platinum at $10.70. He's clearly feeling circumspect too. But that said, I spoke to him three or four days ago before the big move, and perhaps he might revise his forecast given what's happened. But to conclude, what do I think? I still think we see $2,000 gold this year. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll be back too and with another video very soon. In the meantime, cheerio.